with a script. Then we got together with some guys from Continuum Pictures, uh, Danny Torres and, uh, and uh, James Duvall, uh, David Scruggs. We put these guys together. They came aboard to shoot it. Uh, we came aboard with that storyline, and then, we, as you saw, we, got, we cast it and put a lot of great actors in behind it, but um, I do all the martial arts choreography in it, obviously. Right. So you, s you get to see a little jiu-jitsu versus other styles that have been prominent in television. Oh, it's in done television. so well. It's done so well. Um, yeah, I'm really dying to see this go because <laughs> this is something that will hold a lot of interest for all of you out there. I mean, you've got a bodybuilder who's a, a martial artist and a comedian who's got a movie, got a script, and it's all put together, and it's, it's phenomenal. And, and uh, I'm really proud to say that Vinny's my friend because this is just amazing. I have one more question. When you train like this and you're in a situation, and it's, it's a real situation, and s a group of guys comes around you, do you ever have any self-doubt that you won't be able to handle the situation? I think everybody has self-doubt. I don't care how polished you are. I think that anybody who's been in a real, real combat situation knows nothing is final. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the best way to answer it. I mean, I, I really, I just, what I mean is, after training 20 plus years in jiu-jitsu in the arts and the things that we do, you right. react secondary, it's second nature, it's what you do. It's you you yeah. react like, a, like a, an echo or a heartbeat, that's what you do. But all combat situations, all fights are different. They're not always the same. And you don't know how far away a guy is, who's with him, who's around the corner, is he carrying, what has he got, does he got a pipe, a bat, a knife, uh, a firearm. You know, these are issues that come up. So if we jump into just saying, oh, yeah, I can handle myself in any situation, I think it would be a, a lie, a little boastful, and it would be, you yeah. know, not... Well, let's put it this way. The, uh, the high percentage of average guys on the street don't know how to fight. Yes, I agree with all. that. I agree when with you're that. When you're doing what you're doing, or, or even the people say, oh, wrestling's fake, you don't hurt anybody. Well, you know what? All those holds are real, and you can use them. And my, when you see a punch coming, you see this coming, you know how to dodge, how to grab, how to do this, how to bypass, how to turn it around, because you're so used to doing it, it does become second nature. When I see some of the wrestling stuff that you guys have done, yeah. and, and I look at it and I say, you know, that takes so much talent to do that without breaking somebody's oh, neck. I, I mean, I mean, I don't really believe that people know how much talent it takes to, to yeah. do that. Yeah, um, and you do get injured, you know. Oh, how yeah. could you not? Yeah, and there's always somebody with an ego who wants to stretch out a little bit, like uh, Gene LaBelle. <laughs> wow. Gene's wonderful. I trained with him in 65, and we're still friends today, but, you know, he likes to choke people out. But he does everything in fun. But I learned a lot from Gene. And, and wrestling is, is, is a good means of, of fighting. I mean, you take somebody down, you're going to end up on the ground usually anyway, most people. You better know something on the ground. I, I agree. Most A lot of the fights end up on the ground. Um, what we try to practice to do is like the counter yeah. to all of those things. Right. In other words, you know, um, most people, not most people, just today's people. Today, right. MMA and ground fighting seems to be what's really prominent. If you rewind the clock every 10 years, all the way back to even when, um, oh my God, uh, Sonny Chiba. If you go all the way back to Sonny Chiba in the 60s, you're going to see every 10 years that the martial arts takes a turn. Okay. You know, it started way back when with him, and he was doing a karate style. Mm -hmm. Then Bruce came in with the Jeet Kune Do. Yep. Chuck came in with Tang Soo Do. Then you had Seagal come in with Aikido. You had Jack Speakman in there for a little while with Kempo. Yeah. You have, oh, Chuck had a 30-year span for, you know, he's been around, obviously. Tang Soo Do stayed a long time. Right. But you, uh, every 10 years, it seems, then you had the Gracies come in and dominate in the high, in late 90s, mm -hmm. right? And then you saw what? Uh, most people started learning, okay, well, let me call it now mixed martial arts which is a little of this and a little of that. Right. Now, is most of this uh, defensive or offensive? Which style are we speaking Well, let's of? just say your style. Um, our style can be used either way. Like, if we're working with a team and they have to go in and insert somewhere that they have to save somebody, mm -hmm. and they can't use firearms, so it's all going to be bladed weapon and open hand, okay? You have to know how to get in there and subdue your... your uh, subdue... <laughs> I don't want to use the wrong word here on television. You want to subdue the bad guys. Yeah, the perpetrator. When, you, when you're <laughs> subduing the bad guys, you have to do it in a fact that's inserted, that's decisive, that's quick, that's reactive, and that shocks his mind, body, spirit, just destroys the guy. Yeah. That doesn't leave way for, for rational, calm, talking, thinking. It's just go in and do your job. If you're working in a law enforcement capacity, now your job is not to break this guy, but to control this guy, mm -hmm. to arrest this guy, and bring him in and do process. So... It's a whole different set, but it's the old jujitsu. It's right. just, I think, your point of your point of, of commitment to application that changes. Okay.
So that would be more defensive. Definitely, I think you should use our art for only defensive reasons. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. I, I thought that was the case. I guess I was right about it. So <laughs> now, I actually got right about something. You're right about a lot. Okay. He's a very smart guy. I mean, I love this guy. He's, uh, Rick's awesome. Okay? Well, I've been a lot of years uh, in A so lot of history. I've learned something. Now, people, uh, you have a website. I, uh, yep, yeah, you can go to my Facebook page, my fan page. That's the best page, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, Vince Ciceri. Uh It'll be linked to mine. It'll be linked to Rick's. And go and look around and see what you, what you got on there. But I, I'm just really excited about this thing, the bodyguard. I mean, the bouncer. I mean, it's like... And it was directed by Joel Murray. So it was Billy, uh, Bill Murray's uh, brother, Joel, who's on Mad Men. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joel was a director. John Murray and I wrote it. And like I said, a lot of David Mamet's guys well, are in it. He's an interesting guy. He's done a lot of things, just like myself. And, and that's why I had to have him on here. And I want you viewers just to really look him up and take note of it. Look for this movie or TV show, whatever you sell it as. It's going <laughs> to be phenomenal. And, it, and the minute anything comes out, I will put it on my, my Facebook, on Rick's Corner. We'll have him back. We'll do some more with it. And I want to thank you so much for watching Rick's Corner and having Vinny here with me. It's been a really, really big pleasure and a privilege and an honor to have you here. Thanks, man. Thank, thank you. you. Thank so you for much. having me. Guys, have a great day, man. Right. Train hard. Thank you so much.